Well, hey everybody, I hope you can hear me good. The wind's blowing pretty hard and this is a uh, long time no see video. I think it's been a year since I made a video and to be honest, I just hadn't had the need to make a video if I don't have anything to talk about. Um, if I'm not teaching, I don't want to do a video. And I'm not going to do a lifestyle video and I notice most of the off-grid channels are getting kind of cheesy. So what this video is going to be about, I'm still on some social media, I'm on Reddit. And the only reason I've been on Reddit is because I've been trying to learn about Starlink. I've got Starlink, and I love it. But some of the problems I have with it, my cable's too long. And everything on the internet, all the internet engineers says you can't extend it. The, the cable that comes with Starlink. They've got their own cable, their own proprietary connectors that go into the router and the satellite dish. It's Cat6 cable. But they've made it near impossible to make it any longer. The longest you can buy is 150 feet. I've got to go 225 feet. Everything I read said you can't splice it because it's, PO, it's PoE, it's power over ethernet. That dish has a motor in it that helps it find the satellites. Also, there's a heater circuit in there. If it gets snow on it, it melts it. So you've got to have a really robust cable. Well, Everything everybody said this won't work. I'm gonna grab the camera here in a minute. I'm gonna walk you through everything of how I did it. That said, this is not a brain transplant. I, I'm only making this video to show you that it can be done. I'm not gonna do a step by step on how you splice a cable. There's plenty of other YouTube videos out there how to make a pass through category six connection. That said, if you don't know how or you don't want to buy the tools, there's a guy on Etsy. You can mail him the cables. He'll splice it and mail it back to you. I'll find that link and I'll put it in the description. I'm also going to show you how I'm powering Starlink off-grid. There'll be a link in the description on that system that I built. And I'll show you the system real quick just as a quick refresher. But I'm not going to divulge in it too much. This isn't a solar off-grid video. This is about Starlink, and this is how you can make it work for you. You'll see the cable out in the yard. I've left it off the ground because I'm testing it before I bury it. Also, I wanted you to see the cable, so all the internet engineers out there, well, he did something different. You're gonna see that cable. I'm gonna show you how the connections are made to code. I'm also gonna show you how I did the satellite dish, and I have it on a pole, and I have it lightning protected. I'll show you how I did that with the ground rod and all the bonding wire. Like I said, this isn't a transplant, a brain transplant, but I am going to show you how this works and how you can make it work for you. That said, one other thing I need to talk about. If you can get a great hotspot that's 5G and you're off-grid, or you can get T-Mobile's new 5G wireless, you need to get it. T-Mobile's 50 bucks. Starlink's $110 a month. I'm on the residential plan. I'm not on the RV plan, and I'm not on the best effort plan. I got in early, and I got one delivered to me right after the beta testing. That said, I've spent over $2,000 just in tree clearing. There was a lot of trees that I couldn't cut. It, it took a whole crew. You have to use the Starlink app, look around, and see the obstructions. You cannot have any obstructions with their satellite dish. You will, if you do, you won't be able to make any video calls. So if you're working remote, it makes it real tough. That said, too, I've got over $600 just in their equipment. Then I've got another four to $500 in the wiring, and now it will be the conduit when it's said and done. I am going to wait on installing the conduit underground. I'm waiting for the price of conduit to go down. So that said, we're going to jump into it, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Glad you're here. So I want to show you what I've got going on here. You've seen another video where I installed this. If you're still been hanging out with the channel here, I want to show you something I've done right here is the factory Starlink cable. You'll recognize the router and I have it going here. I've got a network switch that I may eventually install. And then I've got their ethernet adapter here. I went ahead and bought it because I just didn't want to be left in the dark if uh, they changed the product. Here's where I'm doing things different. Let's go down here. I have this on a timer. It wakes up 30 minutes before I go to work. 
and then at eight o'clock at night it shuts off well why do i do that well here's why turn it around here let me change it real quick here's why can you if you can read that that's the wattage needed for that satellite dish it takes a lot of power oh, 50 watts ain't that much it is if you're living off grid and there's no sense of hammering this battery bank at night when i'm sleeping not needing the internet it takes five minutes in the morning for the system to boot up and it's off and running i'm using a pure sine wave inverter i love windy nation not sponsored and then here i've got the batteries all the batteries i'm using eight walmart batteries for this so far so good it's working really good i just got to keep them topped off of water and i check the the acid level with them and i add acid to them when they need it but here's the system and it's working great so let's go outside and i'll show you the next thing I've you'll done. see the lb right here the starlink cable comes out runs down the wall and then i've got it going to the corner of the cabin let's go to the corner of the cabin so here we are i've got a junction box here this is a telecom junction box open it up so you can see what i've done here i've got a pass-through connector i've bought a shielded see that metal in there shielded factory cable it's 250 feet long and i want you to look at this see that shield that drain wire goes to this wire nut it's grounded and then it goes to the house ground rod you only ground on one end not both ends where you've made the splice that's called a drain wire if you do it at both ends you've created you've created a potential you don't want to do that only on one end and that drains the noise off that category 6e cable and now i'm going to shut the door and i want you to notice something and pardon the wind i'm going to pause right here and let you pit pause that's the connection that you need you can go on the internet and find the color code for that so one more time, go to the internet and find out how to do that. So now I'm going to show you the temporary that I've got. I was wanting to prove to you that I'm running this cable. This is category 6E shielded direct burial. It has the, the gel in it. This is also an American cable. It is not Chinese. I've tried a Chinese cable. It did not work. It has to be an American-made cable. As you can see, it goes down. And we're going to go down to the satellite dish next. I'm going to show you this real quick. I've got the cable going down to a pipe and then back up. This is where I can drive my tractor while I test. i got blocks. It's easy to drive over it, and I don't tear any cables up. Also, you want this cable off the ground for mice and rodents while you're testing. Don't bury the cable till you know it's all working. Here we are at the Starlink dish. It doesn't show it really well because I've got a lot of that pole on the ground, but that's a 20 foot pole that I sunk in the ground. I use post hole diggers and use a lot of concrete. I want to make sure this is very stout because we have high winds up here. On top, that is the Starlink pole adapter that I ordered. And then on I'll get closer to it, but you see going down the pole, I've got deer stand ladder rungs. That way if I ever had to climb the pole and I didn't want to get a ladder, that's how I could get up the pole. Now I'm going to walk and talk so and I don't want to trip. So I want to show you how this is wired up. So there's the grounding rod that I was talking about. It goes up this conduit and it keeps going and I have it connected to the satellite dish metal that's it no more don't go nuts that's just for lightning then i've got a one inch weather head coming down to the junction box so the junction box this is what i want to show you see this drain wire i left this for an example here that's going back up to the cabin it is not connected at this ground rod Remember I was talking about it was a drain wire. It has to be going back. I can't stress that enough. So I'm going to pause on this again. This is the connection that you need. Hit pause. Go look it up. Then I've got the sticker on here that 
there is potential here because this is power over ethernet so i always put a warning label on there so no fool just jumps in here so this is how it works it works great and turn the camera around so all the uh internet engineers said this can't be done i tested my speeds this morning that's when it's uh, there's not a lot of usage if you're using starlink you know in the afternoon it slows to a crawl they've oversold it and that's one of the pet peeves i do have about starlink we were promised high speeds in the afternoon it's extremely slow it, it's it's ridiculous so that said though i tested it this morning and i tested it this afternoon my speeds are much higher than when i was just using the factory cable and i think it's because i went with a better cable the uh, cable that i bought is high dollar it's not cheap and it's a lot fatter conductor than what the factory cable came with i also know that my connections are really good i i use the magnifying glass when i did the crimp i use pass-through connectors so one other thing that you need to know about and i think another reason uh, i've got higher speed the way category six works 6e it has more twist you'll see a lot of guys on the internet i want to use category five no i want to use category six cable no you want to use 6e shielded direct burial and get the fattest cable you can get another thing i wanted to do is i'm going to move the camera again that's a factory connection that's how i got away with using fatter wire that would not fit my crimp tool so we're talking about voltage drop and voltage drop is taken care of with fatter wire i've got higher speeds now so this was a nice little hack that i just looked into this is going to wrap the video up i'm i need to feel like i need to apologize a lot of these videos have not been coming out i'll, I'll be honest uh, with all the social media privacy issues now i'm just not too cool about it i'll only put a video out when i can teach and show something that um I really haven't found on the internet. I may shoot another video. I've got a bear fence that I built around my cabin. I've got a uh, potential bear problem that's about to rear its ugly head. We've got more bears up here now, and I've got freezers on the porch. I got that system working last night. I accidentally touched that wire, and it, yeah, it was a jackass episode. It knocked me pretty good, which is good. But for this video, this wraps it up. I'm glad you, you stuck around to watch it all. Don't let anybody tell you it can't be done when you think you can do it. Uh, I saved a lot of money doing it myself. I say that. I'm ashamed of how much money I've spent on this system just in tree removal, but it is what it is. And if I, uh, to work remote and have good internet, that's what it's gonna take. My co-op was supposed to run fiber optic to me. I've given up on them. I'm at the end of the line and it's a two mile run in here. They're not gonna do it and this takes care of it and it actually makes me more self-sufficient i'm the guy who installed this i'm the guy who troubleshoots it and i'm the guy who's gonna fix it when it goes bad and now i know everything about it i feel pretty confident with it well i appreciate you watching take care and god bless